Isn't he worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the things God has done, is doing, and going to do. First, giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But also, I acknowledge and give honor to your pastor, the Reverend David Allen, my friend. Can we give God praise for a pastor this morning? And if we're going to lift up him, I, I have to lift up uh, our first lady. Hi, I play as first lady. I also want to give honor and acknowledge all the other clergy in the house again. Uh, Reverend Della, just a spirit uh, again. I just love that spirit. But to all the clergy and hearing about the wonderful background, to all the leadership here at Bethel Tabernacle, I'm, I'm not a stranger this morning because I've worshiped with you. Somebody say worship, worship. And when you worship with somebody, you get to feel the genuine, the real them. If you want to meet somebody, meet them in worship. You'll see the real them. And I'm just grateful for the privilege. And truly, thank you, Pastor Allen. Uh, I may have preached for over uh, 37 uh, years, but I never take for granted this privilege to stand before you. It ain't about how many times you've done it. It's a privilege each time. And to be able to worship with you, but again, I must acknowledge my family. Starting, she may be my wife, but most important, she's my best friend. First Lady Terry. Love you, baby. But my children, uh, uh, two of my sons are not present, but my oldest daughter, Patience, and uh, Joshua, the youngest boy, Sierra. And uh, again, I want to thank you, Tim, uh, our friend Tim, for showing up this morning. But I, I, I got to lift up. We got two of the grands here, Skylar and Kennedy. I don't know about y'all, but can I speak to the grandparent? I was talking with a grandparent the other uh, while ago, and I was talking about how, how much fun grandchildren are, especially being little. And this lady said to me, you know, I'm with you. If I knew they were going to be so much fun, I would have had them first. <laughs> Can I get an amen from the grandparents? I want to be a good steward of uh, the time we have together. So, uh, again, it's important to be a good steward of God's time. So, I want to prepare to jump right into uh, what the Lord has put on my heart for uh, the teaching and the message this morning. And the message, uh, if you want to write down a title for what I'm uh, going to try and share in the Lord, is simply entitled, Bitter or better? Bitter or better? In the book of Genesis, in the 50th chapter, in the 20th verse of this wonderful book, we hear these words. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. For you, you thought evil, but God meant it unto good. Bitter or better. Will you pray with me? Let us pray. O oh God of our weary years, O oh God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on this journey, we ask that thy rock will fill the house right now. 
that thy spirit will fill every heart of every man, woman, boy, and girl, and that, Lord, we leave this place saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Lord, we ask that you meet us right now in this preaching moment and that you will allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And the people of God said together, amen, amen, and amen. If you believe God, can you give God a hand praise right now? Just give God a, a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Someone once said, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, over my time of preaching and teaching, I've also found that a good story can be worth a thousand words. And this morning, just to kind of lay a foundation for the preach word, I want to share uh, one of actually my favorite stories that I heard many years ago. Uh, the story is about an old man who lived high in the mountains in a small village in Africa. It is said that this man was the smartest man alive. One day, a couple young boys hearing this decided they were going to prove he wasn't as smart as everyone thought. So it is said they went out in the forest and they caught a small bird. And one of the boys took the bird and put it in his hand. And he said to the other boy, we're going to go up to that old man and asked him this question. And the question we're going to ask him is, is the bird dead or is the bird alive? Is the bird dead or is it alive? Because the one boy said to the other, because he said, if the old man says the bird is dead, I'm going to open my hand and let it fly away. But if he says the bird is alive, I'm going to close my hand and crush it. The other boy laughed with glee and said, yes, we got him. So it is said they went to the house where the old man lived out far on the edge of town. And as they approached, the old man was sitting out front on his stairs with a stick drawing in the dirt. As the young boys approached, the old man looked up. And he said to the young boys, young man, what do you want? And the one boy walked up to him and said, old man, I got a question for you. The old man said, you do? He says, yes. And he held out his hand and said, old man, answer this question. Is the bird in my hand dead or is it alive? It is said the old man looked down and started writing in the dirt. Then he looked up at the boys. Then he looked down again and kept writing in the dirt. And then finally he looked up and he said, Young man, the question you have asked me, if the bird is dead or alive, I cannot answer. He said, I cannot answer if the bird is dead or alive because the answer to that question is not in my hand. It's in yours. There are certain things that I am convinced about. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is not a question in my life. If God is real, it's not a question. But also the love of God is not a question because only a loving God would love us so much in his omnipotence that he would give us this gift called choice. Somebody say choice. choice. Say choice. choice. Bethel Tabernacle, I just came by for a few minutes just to remind you that you can either create 
or destroy yourself based on your choices. We have the choice to choose a life of blessing and joy. Or we have the choice to make choices that will cause us, and I'm talking to young people and old, to make our lives a living hell of pain and misery. Choices. My beloved, the Bible tells us the rain falls on the just and the unjust. In other words, bad things don't just happen to bad people. They happen to good folk. Being a Christian and saying that you love God, hear me, does not exempt you from bad things happening to you. Somebody's got to be real and tell you. Just loving God does not exempt you. Bad things are going to happen in all of our lives. We do not have the power to control all our circumstance. We don't control if cancer. I, I had cancer surgery. Darling, I'm praying for you. Last year. You don't control heart attacks, strokes. You don't control if your child's going to be addicted to drugs. Circumstance and situation, bad things also happen to good people. But hear me on this. No matter what happens in this life, God loves us and he always gives us this choice. Not the circumstance, but how we choose to respond to it. I got another word for you. Somebody say trust. Say trust. trust. Proverbs 3 and 5. One of my favorites, y'all. Y'all y'all know this scripture. Trust in the Lord with all. Did it say trust in the Lord with some of your heart? Much of your heart? It says trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And then listen to this. And lean not onto thine own, what? Understanding. You and I don't have the mind of God. But acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In other words, trust God. And how much should you trust him? Job said, though he slay me, yet. Will I trust him? Jesus said in the garden of Gethsemane before crucifixion, not my will, but thy will. Trust. You can't trust him a little. You got to trust him. How much? Oh, somebody, somebody praying this morning. Y'all know there ain't no preaching without praying. See, if there's praying out there, they'll be preaching in the pulpit. You got to pray up the preacher. My beloved, the key to making good choices in life, keep it simple, is trusting God. You want to just go on and finish the sermon? <laughs> Thank you, darling. All right, folks, and how much must you trust him through heartache, through diagnosis, through disappointments, and pain, pain, you have to trust him. Let me, again, get right um, uh, into just the heart of this uh, message so we can get you out of here. Uh, we need to take a look at a story that I believe is the ultimate story of someone 
who not only trusted God, but chose to trust God so much that he, instead of being bitter, got better. In the book of Genesis, there's a story about a young man named Joseph. Joseph's story is found in Genesis beginning in chapter 37 through chapter 50. We don't have time this morning uh, to uh, go and have me read you the whole story. But I suggest this story is your story. That's one of the things about the Bible. Stop reading about them and understand it's about you. It's about us. Ain't nobody interested in reading about somebody else. But if you put yourself and that's what God wants you to do. Amen. Teach, pastor. But the story of Joseph is found here in Genesis. Go read it for yourself. But I'm going to just highlight a couple things just to try and communicate this message. According to the Bible, we hear that Joseph had 11 brothers. 10 of them envied him. But the Bible didn't just say envy. It says they hated him. His own brothers hated Joseph. And let me just pause to say this. So often we like to sit in the judgment seat and say, oh, Lord, that's terrible. The brothers hated their brother. Well, let's bring it to today. Let's look at us. Because if we are honest, there's a lot of envy and jealousy and maybe even hate in our own families. We need to pray for our families. Pray your family up every day. Because the enemy is evil. Joseph brothers hated him so much that according to Genesis 37, they beat him up one day, threw him in a pit, and then, even worse, sold him into slavery. His own brothers. And then they told his father that he was dead. Now, tell me, this is it's you, how do you think you would feel, but how do you think Joseph felt after his own brothers beat him, threw him in a pit, and then sold him into slavery? Can anybody say bitter? Did he have a right to be bitter? Joseph had every reason, because we're all human, to be bitter. And when you bitter, y'all know what bitter's like. Oh, poor me. Start having pity parties. You ever been with somebody who loves a pity party? Because they're bitter. Poor me. But, y'all know what but means in the Bible, don't y'all? When you see but in the Bible, that means watch out. God's about to show up in this situation. But, instead of choosing, remember it's a choice, to be bitter about what had occurred and happened to him, Joseph made the choice to what first trust God and instead of being bitter allow the situation to make him better oh somebody give God a praise up in here for a choice Joseph according to the story y'all was sold into slavery in Egypt to a man by the name of Potiphar who was the captain of the guards 
of Pharaoh. But look what happens if you make a good choice to trust God. Joseph trusted God so much and didn't allow the situation to make him bitter that when he got the pot the first house, God blessed Joseph. The Bible says, even in slavery, that God prospered Joseph. Oh, hallelujah. See, see often we want to tell God, change my situation. Take me out of this situation. Sometimes you need to just say, I'm going to stay in it, God, but I'm going to trust you to help me get through the situation. Stop trying to change your situation and trust God. Even in slavery. And because of his good attitude, because that's what trusting God will give you. A good attitude. And with a good attitude, folk love people who got a good attitude, y'all. Who want to be around somebody with a negative and bite, backbiting attitude? But when you got a good attitude, you smile even when your heart is breaking. You got to smile even when you feel like crying. But when people see it, oh, I know I got a witness in the house. But when people see it, Potiphar saw that boy attitude. His anointing. Joseph also had a good work habit. Don't be a lazy person. Work wherever you are. Martin King said, if you a garbage man, throw him high. Thing about Joseph, he had such a good attitude. Potiphar put him over the whole house and put him in charge of everything he had. Now, I wish I could stop and say this is a happy ending, y'all. But bad things happen. And when one bad thing happens, what happens, y'all? Before you know it, or oh, somebody preaching in the choir, before you know it, here comes something else. Joseph was a good looking boy, y'all. And Potiphar had a wife who had eyes for Joseph. In other words, like Whitney Houston, she went around singing, I'm saving all my love for you. But Joseph was a man of integrity. Potiphar's wife cornered him one day, laid hands on him, but Joseph wiggled out, escaped, fled from that situation. But she got his coat. Watch out for scorn. She went and told Potiphar that Joseph attacked her. Lied on him. And Potiphar believed her. Threw Joseph into prison. Is somebody with me? First, he was betrayed by his own brothers. Now, he's being lied on. Thrown into prison. Bitter. I've done it once. Now this, y'all know how we are. Uh -huh. I've had it up to here. <laughs> you don't control your situations. You're not in charge of your circumstance. But you have a choice. Even when it comes over and over. Joseph. Made a choice again to trust God. In prison, he trusted God. And because, somebody say attitude. attitude. With a good attitude. Folk love a good attitude even in prison. Woo, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
the head keeper of the prison saw the attitude, liked the work, and put him in charge of all the prisoners, y'all. Don't tell me what God won't do. And while he was there, he was helping everybody. Joseph had a gift, y'all. And he could interpret dreams. And, and it happened that the chief butler and baker of the pharaoh had been thrown in jail. He was mad at him. But while he was there, Joseph explained a dream that Pharaoh was having and that he was going to bless the butler. The butler said, oh, thank you. Sure enough, Pharaoh pardoned the, the butler and hung the baker. The butler got out of jail because his attitude changed after Joseph. But after he got out of jail, he forgot about Joseph. Joseph encouraged him. But after he got out, Joseph who? Joseph what? Okay. Time for me to get ready to take my seat. Oh, yeah. This is about over. But look what has occurred to this point. He's been lied on betrayed by his own brothers, and now he's been forgotten. Does anybody know what it feels like to be forgotten? Pastor, I pastored 30 years, and I've had members, some of the mothers, mad at me because I mentioned everybody's name but hers. It wasn't of the heart. Pastor's human. It don't feel good, though, to be forgotten. But before I take my seat, let me help you with this. God's time is not ours. Sometime you must wait on the Lord. You must wait how long? Until the Lord says so. Pastor can't tell you, the elders, the deacon can't tell you. You have to wait until God steps in. But that don't happen if you give up in a pit. That don't happen if you give up in a prison. That don't happen if you stop trusting God through cancer, through heartache, through divorce, through But in God's time, Pharaoh had been having a dream that nobody could interpret. And guess what happened? God reminded the butler about Joseph. Not only did Joseph go to Pharaoh and interpret his dream, told him there's going to be a famine. We got to store food and be ready for it. Pharaoh listened to him. Sure enough, it happened. Nobody had food but Egypt. Pharaoh got so blessed with Joseph and loved him in his attitude so much that he made him the secretary of agriculture, the number two man in all of Egypt. He gave him a palace, gave him a wife, gave him servants. Come on, somebody. From the pit to the palace, he will. Oh, before I leave, remember those brothers? Guess what? They didn't have no food. So guess where they came to get food, y'all? They came on down to Egypt land. And who did they have to go before? Joseph. But when, when God is blessing you, you ever notice how people don't even recognize you? When you start believing God, folk can't even tell who you are. Who are you? They didn't even recognize Joseph. And he didn't tell them. Hallelujah. Not at the, first, at the beginning. But eventually he told them. And please, my beloved, hear this. 
Bitter leads to destruction. Better, Joseph blessed his brothers. The same ones who took and betrayed him. He blessed. See, we want to seek vengeance and bitterness on others. My beloved, let it go. Let it go. Let, let it go. I'm talking to you today. You know who I'm talking to. You got to let that bitterness go. But what happened? His brothers, his father, he brought him to Egypt, but the father died. And this is his people. The brothers all got scared because they believed that Joseph was now going to seek revenge because their father's dead. They believed he only did it because of the father. He did it for God. They got all scared. And what did he have to do? Remember that verse I read for you in Genesis 50, 20? He sat them down and had to tell them, what you did for me, don't sugarcoat it, was evil. But you got to understand the God we serve. That when you trust God, you stop thinking it's all about you. And maybe believe God is working through you to do something amazing. But what you meant for evil, he said in the New Testament, and we know that all things will work together for the good. It don't matter what you're going through. God can turn it around. He's a way maker. He told them what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. But and I, and, and I just need you to not forget this. We all know that what God meant for evil, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. But people neglect to really read the last part of what he said. He said God did this to save much people alive. One of the biggest issues we have, it's always about us. It's always about me. Pull me. Look what I'm going through. Sometimes it ain't about you. Sometimes God uses you and take you through it in order to bless somebody else. Stop always looking at you and believe that sometimes God can use you to bless somebody else. He trusted God. He made a choice to be better and not bitter. And not only, see, if you make a good choice, you won't only bless you. But Joseph saved all of Israel. And guess what lineage Jesus came through? Through Israel. And that means if he saved them, then he saved Jesus, and he also saved all of us. That's the kind of God we serve. The choice is yours, Bethel, bitter or better. God bless you. Everybody's standing. Wow. Sometimes it's not the loud shouting of a preacher or the running around on the pulpit. But when you listen, when you listen, there's so much depth to that word. There's so much depth to that word. Uh, that's why you can't, you can't come into the house of God and hear a word and expect to leave it 
go back and live your same old life as if you didn't hear the word because you are accountable now. You can remain, it's a choice. You can remain bitter or you can get better. And through the, between bitter and better, there is a process. The process is one of trust. You, you hear the sermon. I'm sitting down there going like, thank you, God. I want you to grab the hands of your neighbor. I want you to ask your neighbor, did you hear the message? Just turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, did you hear the message? Did you hear the message? Ask them another question. What's your choice? Ask them, oh, you got to talk to them. Ask them, what's your choice? You can you choose to remain bitter or you're going to get better. Choose to remain bitter or you're going to get better. We don't want to do better. We don't want to do bitter. We want to do better. Oh, come on. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in a place of bitterment, a place of wondering why my life is like this, feeling like you had it up to here. You, you heard the whole sermon. It's not for me to re-preach it because it was from God. Wherever you are, this is a place where you can recognize that God intended for you to be here today. The sermon was for you. The sermon was for you. As a church, we need that sermon. I'm going to say it again. As a church, we needed to hear that sermon. I don't play when it comes to God. Not, not even his word. Absolutely not. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, now is the time that you can step forward. You're backslidden. You don't know him. You know it. You know it. You know it. You know it. We got to move forward. You don't know him. Now is the time. Living your life outside of Christ is a place of, of bitter, bitter seasonings. Things that you're tasting, things that's it's bitter. I want to give you another option. I want to give you a choice. The gospel is one of a choice. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. And choose to live in the land of the bitter or the land of the better. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, I want you to come. We want to pray with you. There's ministers all around this house. They can pray. That's right. Come on up. Come You're coming to receive the Lord Jesus? Come on. Come on, Reverend Dylan. That's right. You stay right there. That's right. I guarantee your healing. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Lead her in the Lord's prayer. Pray with her. There's others. You gotta reach to a place where you let go of that bitterness. I don't try to rush God. You know what happens now? The word of God says that the angels of God are rejoicing right now just because of this decision. I'm not trying to rush God. You don't know what she's going through. And what God needed her to make this decision today. That's right. You had to be, you had to be here, bro. So thank you. My soul is filled. Yes, yes. While they're praying for her, and everybody can say this prayer. Just pray with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this word. Thank you for this word. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Save me. Save me. Renew me. Renew me. Refresh me. Refresh me. Reposition me. Reposition me. Let my name be written down. Let my name be written down. 
Thank you for the blood. I believe you died for me. I believe you were raised and sits at the throne making intercessions for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saving me and for saving my family and for saving everyone that I'm connected to because I moved from a place of bitter to a place of better. Oh, come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. You can do better than that. Put your hands together and bless his name. Oh, put your hands together and bless his name. Wow. Hallelujah. That's right. That's all true. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Stay right there with her. Stay right there. Stay right there. Get her information. Stay right there. Stay right there. Let's sing out doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow and if you are still looking for prayer we can pray for you afterwards these any one of these ministers can pray with you and not because we're saying the doxology mean church is over to his hand and get better and the people said together Bless you.